In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an error bar chart in R. And this is based on an example that I showed you with an independent sample t-test. So it's a follow-on from this video, independent t-test, where I tested the difference between means in frontal brain volume between non-smokers and smokers. So I'm assuming that you've probably looked at this video if you want to learn about the independent sample t-test, because this is where this example comes from. And in that video, I showed the results right up for that analysis. And I also included this error bar chart so that I can depict the difference between the means with the 95% confidence intervals. This chart was actually created in SPSS, and now I'm going to create it in R. Now, in the first instance, I'm just going to do the basics of creating an error bar chart like this one here. And the vast majority of people would create this type of error bar chart. Now, later in the video, I'm going to show you how to manipulate the function in such a way that you can get some extra information or to do it in a way that's a little bit more sophisticated. And by that, I mean a pooled error term, as well as dealing with the issue of overlapping confidence intervals when there's significance. Again, for those of you who don't want to learn about that, fair enough. I'll tell you in this video when you can stop listening to do what 95% or more people would do when they create an error bar chart. So what I've got to create this error bar chart is a function. So there's no package required to install here. And the function I'm going to use was created by Tom Bagley. I found it on this web page. Now I've adapted this syntax in such a way to get the error bar chart to look the way I prefer it to look. So it is slightly different to what Tom Bagley posted on his web page. So the first step is to consider removing objects in memory. So if you have existing objects, they might end up being referenced in this syntax inadvertently. Next, you'll want to get the data file. And this data file is from that independent t-test example that I talk about in this video over here. I'm going to get that same data file. So it's a CSV file. And I'll just show you the data. So I've got frontal volume as a continuous score. And I've got my two groups, one and two. Now, again, I'm assuming that you've watched the first video on the independent t-test. I want to get labels associated with my data because in my chart, I don't want to see the number one and two. I want to see non-smokers, smokers. And to do that, or one way to do that in R, is to make sure you use the factor command. And so I'm going to copy and paste this because that is going to do it for me. But just briefly, I've got two groups. And that's being specified here, C1 and 2. That's group 1, group 2, group 1, and group 2. And I'm going to give it the name non-smoker, because that's the first group, and smoker number 2. So when I click Enter, and I show my data again, there's a new variable. And you can see group labeled. And I'm going to need that to create the labels on the x-axis of the error bar chart. So next up. I need to actually include the calculations. This is the BSCI function that has been written up to actually do the calculations to get the confidence intervals. Again, I'm just assuming that you want to do a generic chart with means and confidence intervals in the error bars. So I'm not going to point out any of the specifications in this here, but I'll talk more about things that you can change in the second half of this video. So I just literally copy and paste all that information, and then click Enter. And then once I go to the next step, step five, just literally copy and paste that. Uh, one thing I will point out, though, is that the grouping variable is the third variable in the data table. So that's this variable here. If I wanted the numbers to show up in the x-axis, then I would specify variable two. And variable one is the dependent variable. So that's why that is specified this way. Group.var equal 3. And of course, I'm referencing my data because that's the name of my data that I referenced when I opened up the data file. So I've got my data. Group variable is the third column. And dependent variable is in the first column. I'm assuming, again, that you just want a generic error bar chart. I'll talk about these two options in the second part of this video. So let's copy and paste that. And here are the means, 5.33 versus 4.30 rounded. And we have the lower and upper bounds, 95% confidence intervals. Now I need to plot those values. And that's done with this function here. So we need to copy and paste 
this information, copy and paste, and enter. And here's the last bit that I need. Now, again, I'm this is the plot.bsci function that's been created up here. That's been created, and now it's going to be referenced. And I've got my data. That's the data file that I've named for this analysis. And then I've got my grouping variable 3. And I've got the dependent variable, which is in this first column. Now, you can have an, a label on the x-axis. If you want a name like group, for example, if you wanted the word group to show up underneath your two labels, then you would put the word group here. I just have a period because I don't actually want anything to show up there. I find it looks better that way. And then finally, my y-axis dependent variable needs to be named something. And I've got frontal brain volume here. So now I'm just going to copy and paste that. And it's going to create the error bar chart that I want with the means and the 95% confidence intervals. And here it is. So you can manipulate the size of the bar chart by pushing it closer if you want it narrower or if you want it wider. So it looks pretty similar to what I created here. Not exactly the same because it is a different program, but mostly the same. There is a grid in the background. Some people like that sort of thing. So the way you could save this is you could right click and then save as a postscript file. If you were submitting this to a journal, they would probably make good use of a postscript file to get really high resolution in the printing. Or you can save it as a bitmap or a meta file. And you can also print it. You could print it as a PDF and publications also can use PDF files quite usefully when it comes to doing high resolution images. Or you could just use the snippet tool in Windows and then click New and then you could just snip that and copy and paste that into a Word document and then paste it above your figure caption like I did here. But this was done in SPSS and this one was done in R. Very similar. Now there are elements that you can manipulate and again for those of you who just want to do a basic error bar chart, you've got what you need, and you can keep using this indefinitely. If you had more than two groups, you would just have to specify your groups in this level here, levels C, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever it was. And you would get an error bar chart with those 4, 5, 6 groups that you've got. So one thing that I would probably want to manipulate in this chart is the y-axis. You can see that it has a range of 3.5 to 6.5. And you might want to have something that's bigger, like 2 to 8 or something like that. The way you can change that is in the syntax. In the actual plot BSEI syntax, you can see this part here, moe dot y divided by 3. If you divide this, say, by 1 or 2, you will get a larger y-axis. So I'll show you what it looks like when I divide by 1. And you'll see that the y-axis gets bigger. So I'm just going to literally copy and paste that again. Click Enter. And then redo the plot. And there we go. Now we have a larger y-axis going from 2 to 8, which makes it more comparable to what I did in the write-up for that independent sample t-test. This might be arguably a little bit more appropriate. So that's one important thing you can manipulate. Now, there are other things you can manipulate, like the degree of line width associated with elements in the chart. But I'm not going to talk about that in this video. I feel like that would be a different video. What I'm going to talk about instead are the cool features associated with this function that you don't see just everywhere. And that's relevant to getting the pooled error. You can see here that it says pooled error false and difference false. And the pooled error false option is the specification you want if you wanted your error bars to be consistent with the standard deviations that might be unequal. So if your standard deviations are numerically unequal the, and the sample sizes are equal, say, you'll get differently sized 95% confidence intervals. Now, some people argue that when you do something like an independent sample t-test, or an ANOVA, it's based on a pooled error term. So in the ANOVA, you'll see, you'll see there's a mean square error. And that mean square error is used for the entire analysis. And people argue that you should be using a pooled error term for your confidence intervals if you're trying to show something relevant to your ANOVA, if you're following up your error bar chart from an ANOVA. So you can do that in this analysis by specifying pooled error true. So you just got to change that to true. 
and change this one to true, PSCI. 